Hey folks, John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back. So, uh, on a video I did the other day, I was making some blacksmith's knives, and I asked if anybody had any projects they wanted to see, and somebody commented, Battle Axe. And if you've been around my channel, you know I've made a couple of Viking axes now. This is the first one I've made. This was a three-piece construction, spring steel bit, mild steel body, mild steel eye. This one was a two-piece construction. Second one I made, spring steel blade, mild steel body. I've actually been using it as a yard work tool. Works pretty good. But there's a few things I feel like I can improve upon and uh, and making a better product as far as fit and finish goes and a few things I've learned and picked up along the way. And I'm going to put that into practice here today and see what we can come up with. So we're doing Viking Axe 3, so stick around. So while the forge is coming up to eat, I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about what I'm doing differently. What I've got to start, I've got a piece of quarter inch uh, by inch and a half mild steel cut off at nine inches, marked off three and a half inches from each end. This is what I'm going to flatten out and spread out to make the eye. This is the 5160 I'm going to be using for the blade. When I put this bit in here, the scarfs came almost all the way up to the edge for the forge weld. And there's really no need for that, and it makes dressing this weld a huge pain. And also, I scarfed it down too thin in some places on this side. You can see right there the weld didn't take completely. I mean, that's, this thing's 99% weld. That's the only part that I've had a problem with, but, you know, can't have that. So I'm going to bring the welding plane back. I feel like that'll make it a little bit easier to dress, and I'm not going to scarf my edges down uh, as thin with this. But anyway, let's get to it. First things first, we're going to do some set downs to isolate the material between those two center punch marks in the center. One there. See what we got going? I'm going to spread this out into our eye. Nothing to it really, just bending down that material until I get to about an eighth of an inch or so. Now we'll brush this baby clean. Put some flux on there. Go ahead and bend it around and get ready for welding. Next step is to forge weld this thing solid. First weld, here we go. Felt good. Felt real good, actually. All right, second weld on the eye, here we go. So what I'm trying to do here, you can see the differences in thickness. I'm trying to thin down the area back here near the eye to its final thickness, so I don't kind of mess with it later. And I'm trying to leave as much mass up here in the nibs that are going to be welded as possible so they'll hold the heat the longest, make it the easiest to get a good weld. But it's sticking well. I'll just take a few more heats, keep doing what I was just doing, and get it to the shape I like. Right now that I've got the, uh, the neck of the axe dressed up where I like it, what I'm going to do is put this back in a vise, and then take a handled hot cut chisel and split open the seam of the weld on the end over here. Of course, it doesn't want to come apart. That's how you know your weld took really well when you can't chisel it apart. Oh man, this, this is going to be annoying. This might take a few heats. Sorry about this. So I eventually did get the seam of the weld to split. It just took, you know, quite a few heats. So now I'll just brush it clean. They're real good. Throw some flux in there. This is mild steel, so it's really not too fussy about welding. I'll set this baby off to the side for now. So, now it's time to get the bit prepped for welding. So just like we did in Viking Axe 2, we're just going to scarf down the area that's going to be welded in the body. And just like we did with Viking Axe 2, take our chisel and cut some teeth onto that scarfed area. 45 degrees that way. 45 degrees that way. So now we got the body of the axe hot. Get it there nice and straight. Put some more flux in there for good measure. Our bit is cold at this point, so just like we did with Viking Axe 2, we're going to sink this thing in there until it'll stand up on its own. 
squeeze these nibs shut as best we can. I take a couple of heats. These aren't the best tongs for this job. Took a few heats, but I got it in there where I like it. So uh, next thing we gotta do is just weld all this stuff solid. First weld, here we go. All right, it's definitely welded. You know because if it's not, when you go to brush it, the blade will come out. So I'm just gonna take uh, as many welding heats as it takes to get all this blended in and dressed up where I liked it. So anyway, that's what's happening now. Last step is to drift the eye to its final shape and size, so I'm posted up over here over the swage block. Let's stick my tomahawk drift in. I'll go once from the bottom, once from the top. That should get me where I need to go. So, got the profile I want to make marked out. Got it test fitted just to make sure the eye is the right size. Get it going. So moving right along with the grind, I just kind of want to take a second to talk to you about what it is I'm doing. I'm trying to remove material in this whole general area to make the axe a little less front heavy, a little better balanced. Also, I wanted to show you, as you can see, there's no visible seams all throughout here. That's how you know you got good clean forge welds. But uh, see like that bulge right there? I'm trying to take that out and basically taper it down to the edge. So that's what I got going on. It's shaping up real nice though. Uh, I like it a lot. All right, so we're about to quench this thing. I got my grinding disc ready. We're gonna do what's called draw tempering. Basically, I'm just gonna quench the edge and uh, leave the heat towards the back of the axe. Then I'll pull it out once it's cooled off a good bit, clean off some scales so I can watch the colors run. And then I'll, uh, you know, try to see like a light straw or so on the edge to get us where we need to go. Nice even heat on the edge, here we go. I don't know if you can see or not, probably not, but we got brown right there and it's slowly, slowly creeping forward. See what I mean about the draw tempering? We got light straw all through here, brown, blue, everything back here. So uh, that should be good and strong. It should stay good and sharp. All that's left is to sharpen this thing and get it fitted up on a handle. So here's the axe all done. Got on a nice charred, oiled hickory tomahawk handle. Nice black oxide finish over the whole blade, except for on the grind, obviously. But she's good and sharp, as you just saw. All the welds took beautifully. They're pretty much seamless. If you look at it compared to Viking Axe 2, it's ever so slightly smaller as far as blade length goes. But it's about half as thick. It's about half as heavy. It feels much more like a fighting axe should. Very light, very fast. So uh, I'm happy with it. I think this came out really great. Whenever I make these for sale in the future for my Etsy store as well as my shows, this is the standard I'm going to be working off of. So, there you go. How cool is that? Anyway, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Like always, there's always going to be more cool stuff coming. Uh, thanks for everything. You guys are awesome. Take care.